Yo, what is good guys? I hope you're excited because today we are back with another banger reaction. Ugh, it's all reactions now. Does anybody make any original? That's better. All right, chat, uh, give me a second. I'll be right back, but uh, enjoy this video. I gotta pee. But there has to be other content though, right? <clears throat> Wrong. As you can see, beatbox reactions have taken over and become the predominant style of long form content in the community. Reactions, if you don't know, are when someone watches a piece of original content and, well, reacts to it. Now, this kind of content has been on YouTube for a long time and is not at all unique to beatboxing. In fact, there are people who react to just about every kind of content out there. Because of this, reactions have gotten more popular throughout the years, but they have also sparked debate amongst creators regarding the ethics behind them. The most recent chapter in the reaction debate happened happened a few months ago with XQC and SS Sniperwolf. Without going into too much detail, basically they were being called out for watching other creators' content in full, adding little to no reaction, sometimes not even crediting the original creators, then uploading those reactions to their channels for profit. Specifically with XQC, he watched an hour and a half long YouTube video on his live stream, didn't really add anything of substance, then uploaded the entire video to his YouTube channel using essentially the same thumbnail and title as the original. By doing this, he essentially created a market substitute that now directly competes with the original video in the algorithm, meaning that his video might appear in your searches or suggestions instead of the original, which, as you can imagine, can negatively impact the performance of the original video. Now, this is how a video in the general YouTube space is impacted. For us, we have to narrow the scope down to our much, much smaller beatbox community where the impact of a market substitute is much greater because the interest in beatboxing is pretty niche and the audiences between creators can overlap. Speaking of audiences, I asked you guys on Instagram and YouTube if you watch beatbox reaction videos and a majority of you guys said yes. Which by the way, I started a Reddit page where I think it'd be fun to hold discussions about beatboxing and content as well as keep you guys up to date with what I'm working on. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. But to get back on topic, with reaction videos being so popular amongst viewers and creators, it's really important to make sure that they are made in a way so that they don't negatively impact the channels who are creating the original content. And that's what I wanna focus on today because not all reaction content is created equal. Let's talk about it. Now, I mentioned XQC and SS Slamper Wolf earlier because I wanted to establish a reference point for what I would deem a bad reaction. I put bad in quotes because there really is no defined good or bad, it's more of a spectrum from better to worse, and where a video falls in that spectrum is determined by a handful of factors. Some of these factors include if the video is monetized or sponsored, how much of the original video is used, the impact it has on the potential market of the original, and the purpose of the new video. Out of all the beatbox reaction videos I've seen, most of them watch the original video in full with minimal to no pausing. A lot of them were probably monetized, which means they are for profit, and for the videos where beatboxers were reacting to beatboxing, they definitely had an impact on the potential market since their viewers are already interested in beatboxing and might have searched or been suggested the video otherwise. In addition, the reactions typically use the original video's thumbnail and title, with the only change being that they put their face on the thumbnail and name in the title. And recently, people are uploading reactions only hours after the original was posted, and after 48 hours, almost every reactor has uploaded this. Imagine posting a video only to within hours have multiple well-known beatboxers with big channels upload a reaction that includes your whole video, thumbnail, and title all before your video even has the chance to thrive. Like, as a creator, I know that sometimes it could take up to a week for a video to find its footing and gain traction. Only getting a few hours? That's crazy. But I want to clarify that I don't think most of the individuals that make content that I would consider on the worst end of the spectrum mean any harm. They just love beatboxing and want to share that with their audience. Though, as I said earlier, not all reaction content is created equal, and there are creators, in my opinion, who produce their reactions on the better end of the spectrum. I think someone who is a good example of this, although not immediately a part of the beatbox community, is the Fairy Voice Mother, who, if you aren't familiar with, is a vocal coach who occasionally reacts to beatboxing and has even collaborated with beatboxers such as River, Stitch, and Beatbox International. This creator being a vocal coach is notable for two reasons. One, their audience is primarily not beatboxers, but rather people who are interested in singing or vocal anatomy. Therefore, when they react to a beatboxing video, there isn't as much overlap, if any, between audiences. Two, the purpose of their video is to analyze the voice and vocal anatomy, all while providing valuable insight that the viewer might not have had otherwise. Now, in all of their videos I've seen, they do typically play the full original video. However, as they are reacting, they 
they paused the video a lot to talk about what's going on vocally. So if anybody was there to only watch the original video and didn't care about their analysis, they would probably get annoyed, leave, and go watch the original video. Another good example, this time from within the beatbox community, is when Maddox reacted to the Inertia vs. Helium battle from GBB 2021. The reason I think this reaction falls on the better end of the spectrum is because he split the beatbox battle into two analysis videos, one for each round. And in each of those videos, he would only watch a small portion, then provide his analysis. He never played the full round uninterrupted. Because of this, it's unlikely that these videos would be considered a market substitute since the original video is only 10 minutes long, while the total runtime of his two separate reaction videos is almost an hour. To give you guys one final example, I saw something recently from D'Lo that I thought was pretty creative. In his recent GBB reactions, where he was a judge, he has been showing his POV from the judge's table. During this portion of the video, the focus is on him, with the original video tucked away in the top left corner, and instead of using the audio from the original video, he uses the audio from his camera, which isn't very good. This combination makes it very difficult to enjoy the original video to its full potential, and anybody watching it is most likely there to hear what insight he can provide as a judge from that event and to watch his real-time reaction. That, along with the fact that both his thumbnail and title are unique and not carbon copies of the original, in my opinion, place these reactions on the better end of the spectrum. Going back to the poll where I asked you guys if you watch beatbox reaction videos, I also asked what you guys thought about beatbox reactions in general. From your responses, it seems that you guys prefer reactions like the examples I provided, where the reactor adds significant insight, value, or just provides a different perspective. So I hope that if any creators are watching this, that they take these factors into consideration when making reaction content so they aren't creating market substitutes and are giving the original content the opportunity to perform to their full potential. Which kind of brings me to why I'm making this video. I feel like every day I check my subscription feed, I see like one original beatbox video followed by multiple reactions to that video. And it's crazy to me with an art form as original and creative as beatboxing that our content right now, well, isn't. Maybe it's due to a desire for views or to keep up with the ever increasing demand for content that, let's be honest, is virtually impossible to keep up with. But reactions, if done on what I would deem the worst end of the spectrum, are very easy to produce. I mean, I could sit down right now and produce a week's worth of them in a matter of hours, but it would all be at the expense of the original creators and I personally wouldn't get all that much enjoyment out of it. Plus, I know how much work can go into producing original content. From planning to scripting, storyboarding, filming, audio engineering, color grading, Editing, editing, cutting shorts, making a thumbnail, and marketing. Where I can imagine not being too happy if someone takes your video, makes it full screen, hides their camera in the corner, plays the video uninterrupted, provides little to no commentary, overreacts, then profits. With that said, when reactions are creatively made and add significant value, they're fun to watch and I totally understand why they're so popular. But I think that basically covers everything. What do you guys think about beatbox reactions? Let me know down in the comments below and stay hydrated.